Oh, uh, this way. Oh, this way. Mac, please do. Uh, what's happening today? We're, We're going, going on to City trip. Hall. We're going to speak on a trip. about litter yeah. going into the water. Chair Richards, committee members and staff. My name is Ronan Battis. Kayla Delgado. Angelina Sanchez. And we are from PS15 Patrick F. Daly School in Red Hook, Brooklyn, representing the fifth grade. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. We have been learning about plastic street litter that becomes dangerous marine pollution and how it gets there. We collected street litter and data from our streets in Red Hook and from a beach at a Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. And guess what? We found the same types of litter in both places. In just one street litter survey in only one block in our neighborhood, we found 389 pieces of litter that will never biodegrade. Imagine how many pieces of litter there are in all of New York City. We learned with cafeteria culture that when it rains as little as one-tenth of an inch per hour, New York City's combined sewer sewer system's capacity is overwhelmed and the mix of polluted stormwater from our streets and untreated raw sewage from our toilets, sinks, and showers is going directly into our waterways. That means when it rains, everything, street litter and things we flush down the toilet, goes out to the ocean. We know that plastic litter shouldn't be in the ocean. Our fish and marine life think that plastic litter is food and they eat it especially because all the plastic litter gets smaller and smaller and never biodegrades. It just keeps polluting our precious waterways and oceans. Imagine opening up a fish and finding plastic inside it and then eating that fish. After we learned about how much litter we have in our neighborhood, we came up with lots of community actions to teach our neighbors about how plastic street litter affects marine life. We performed plays for our neighbors and gave away reusable bags that we made from t-shirts. We made charts and graphs from our litter data to ask the Department of Sanitation for recycling bins on the street. And we made banners like this one to hang on the fence to tell our neighbors the story of what happens to our street litter. And guess what? It worked. We know because we compared the data in our last street litter survey, the litter was reduced by two-thirds. First, we want to thank New York City for all that they have done already to improve the city's wastewater management system. But this is not enough. We really want the city to continue to improve the combined sewer overflow system. For example, you can let the water go somewhere to wait until after the rain stops, and then it could go to the wastewater treatment plant like normal. Or the storm drains on the street could be better designed, make the bars smaller and block the litter from going in. And why not paint a message right on the drain of the curb? We would love to have permission to make storm drain art in our neighborhood in Red Hook. Why can't we? Cities all over the U.S. have done this. These are from Maryland. Keep going. <laughs> Hope DEP is listening. And why, not, and why not paint a message right on the drain or curb? Cities all over the United States have done this. At least you can make a system to capture the litter near the outfall pipes, 
like Mi Mr. Trash Wheel in Baltimore. We are students and we know that the health of our oceans affects the health of all of us. We also know that good data drives policy. We hope that our, number, our numbers and our experience teaches you what it taught us, that we need to do, reduce the amount of plastic litter going into our waters now. Ask one question or two, uh, and I also want to recommend that DEP hires uh, some of these individuals because they actually know what they're doing. I think they're the key to ensuring that uh, we correct this issue. Should we impose a five cent bag fee, plastic bag fee, in New York City, or should we ban plastic bags? I just wanted to hear anyone's recommendation. Hope the state is listening today. You gave away reusable bags, right? What's the importance of reusable bags? Reusable bags are important because then you could reuse them and they won't go in our oceans and they could like fly out garbage cans and go into sewers. Okay. If we have the five cent bag fee, then people wouldn't want to use um, plastic bags anymore. They would have their own reusable bags and, and um, the plastic bags wouldn't go into the ocean. So maybe like I think that's a better idea. Great. Well, I want to thank all of you for coming out and your work uh, and uh, ensuring that we're educated and that the public is educated. And I would love to, I know the chair is not here, but we would love to see your recommendations in writing so that we can incorporate it in our conversations with DEP as well. And maybe DEP should hold a hearing with you all as well. Uh, that's a good recommendation. So uh, thank you all. Thank you for coming out and exercising democracy. Thank you. We're going to have our next panel. Four. I feel like that I did well. Yeah. Do you think people understood what you guys were? Like? I, yeah, I think people yeah. understood. Yeah? Yeah? We did good. <laughs> we did good. I think they did a wonderful job. And we weren't sure they were going to ask a question and they still were able to answer a question. And it, they hadn't planned on that and they still were able to do it. So thumbs up to PS15. You guys are so terrific. It makes such a huge difference to hear from you. But Angelina, were you nervous? Extremely. <laughs> I, was, I was extremely nervous. I was not nervous. That's why I messed yeah? up on the first part. I thought I was going to be nervous, but it was just... Good job guys, look to the camera.